more the excite more the more exciting the atmosphere the more intensity you're going to have to use with the e-collar to break that dog's attention when they're distracted usually i'll have two settings that i recommend that people use one domestic setting in other words for at home and in a non-field environment and the other one for the field and usually with these high-powered hunting dogs we have to use a higher setting and I'd say it's somewhere between 20 and 40 percent higher depending on the dog so expect that you will have to use a higher level in the field and again it's very easy you you experiment with lower levels until you get to a level that makes the dog begin to listen immediately after you use a punishment, but it, not so high that you cause the dog to be nervous. Obedience should be part of the dog's life. It should not be something that you just do when you go out in the yard and run drills. So that's why you should have the e-collar on your dog all the time. Integrate your obedience into the dog's life. Now that doesn't mean that they're on a command all the time. When you want to release them, literally, Lexi, say the dog's name, and Lexi, okay, let her be free. But when you want to get her to do something, when you want to give her a command, when you want to have a good response, have your e-collar ready, give her the command, and be ready to reinforce. One of the most um, profound statements in dog training is you never give a command that you cannot or do not want to reinforce. So in other words, if I'm not ready to make a, a, a correction, if I'm not ready to give some sort of a, a positive reinforcement, if the dog does it wrong or right, then I shouldn't give the command. Classic deal, uh, classic uh, situation. Somebody doesn't have the e-collar on. The, it, the dog is uh, under distraction. And they know most likely the dog's not gonna give them the right response. But because they're lazy, they just give the command anyway. And the dog, surprise, surprise, doesn't listen. Now they have no way of giving the dog a punishment for not listening. And the dog gets away with it. So if you don't have to give that command when you don't have the proper training tool, don't give it. If it's an emergency, of course you're gonna have to try to do it. But in any other scenario, think about what you're doing. Don't give that command unless you have the ability to make the, the correct correction right timing and then a good positive reinforcement when the dog does it right heal now we're going to talk about the basics of force fetch first of all what is force fetch force fetch, force fetch is literally an obedience methodology where the dog learns to first carry an object to avoid getting in trouble carry an object to avoid getting pressure then the dog learns to pick up an object to avoid getting pressure this allows us to have a tool such that we can hone the dog's natural retrieving instinct this has nothing to do with the dog's instinct this is a tool that we use to augment to change to better the dog's natural instinct Okay, this is a tool that we use for that. So the first thing they're taught is to hold the object. Place the object in their mouth. If they were to drop it, originally we would squeeze the jowls until the object's back in and then the pressure would go away. Of course, anytime the dog does it right, we're giving her verbal positive reinforcement, telling her good, good. Okay, the next thing she learned, I'm skipping a lot of steps and just keeping it basic here. The next thing she learned is that if we pinched her ear, okay, give her a light pinch on the ear, that that pinch would go away when the object was in her mouth. The pinch would go away when the object's in her mouth, so that pressure goes away when the object's in her mouth. Eventually, she learned to avoid that pressure by picking it up off the ground. So now we have the tools to both make sure the dog holds the object and also make sure if the dog drops the object that we can get him to pick it up. Now we've extended this, I'll show you a drill where we've extended this to literally 50 yards where we can demand that she goes and picks one of these up at 50 yards and it gives us a perfect delivery. 
but the main thing you're going to use this for is to make a correction if your dog drops a dummy. Okay? So if your dog drops a dummy, make them come back with or without it. So if she was to drop a dummy when you're or a bird, make her come back. So heel nick her if she does if she drops it. Grab her by the collar. Walk towards the object. Grab the close ear. Lift up on the ear until she begins going towards it and then let go. Do not, do not push the dog towards it with the ear. All you're doing is like you're picking up a five gallon bucket that's got a gallon of water in it. That's what it's gonna feel like. And raising the dog over it, hover her over it until you feel her going down towards the object. Let go of it. As soon as you start feeling her, she'll snap the object up, back up, heel at least four or five feet, and let her finish the retrieve. Okay, so in fast motion, if she dropped the object, came back without it, I grab her by the collar, I walk over towards it. Now, if this is a bird and it's in cover, she might have lost sight of it, so you can give it a kick. Pick up on the ear, let go when she's on her way down, come back. No. Sit. So that's how you would use your force fetch correction if there's a problem with the retrieve. I like to call it the bad F word. I do not say the bad F word unless there's a problem. We don't say the word F-E-T-C-H to send the dog on a dummy. We only use it if there's a problem. So if the dog drops a dummy, we use that word in association with tugging up on the ear and we only use it with that pressure. So if we end up having to use it in the field, that dog knows if they hear that word, they better move. And they fix the problem right away and they respect that word. Now we're gonna give you the, the correct sequence to working with your dog on a daily level in the yard. First, you're gonna do your yard obedience, which should consist of at least, at least five minutes of going through sit stays, walking at heel, recalls, and recalls with remote sit. And I will break them up into what I call micro sessions, so you focus for short periods of time on one thing until you get a success, and then move on to another. So I might do sit stay for a bit, get a success, give the dog a treat or positive reinforcement, then work on walking at heel for a bit, maybe add a few distractions, um, challenge your dog a little bit. If you have to make a correction, use it, get a success, move on to another subject, like moving on to recall, do some recalling. Then you can move back to walking at heel. Whatever you feel like your dog needs the most of, focus on that um, uh, as, your, as your subject matter for the day. So try to put focus on the points of, of your dog's normal failure. So whatever they're the weakest at, try to focus on those things. Once you get some success and your dog is focused on you, composed, and performing the commands properly, that's when you go do your, your retrieving. Now we're gonna talk about momentum and control. With retrieving, you have to keep your dog's enthusiasm. We call that momentum. Enthusiasm and confidence, that's momentum. We're going to maintain that by keeping the drills fun, keeping that fun element in there to maintain momentum. We're also gonna work on control. Control is literally, just as it sounds, um, allows us the ability to, to have the dog perform the retrieving tasks exactly like we want them. Okay, so with, with detail and discipline. And there are different drills that, that allow us to work on more momentum, different drills that allow us to work on control, but we're always working to try to keep that balance. So let's talk about the type of retrieving format that allows us to achieve momentum. In a yard setting, that is what I call a fun retrieve. Now, if your dog has always got momentum, in fact, sometimes your dog has too much momentum, then don't do a fun retrieve. You don't wanna jack them up any more than you need to. Now, if you have a dog that seems to start losing interest in retrieving, that's when you would do your fun retrieve. The fun retrieve also can be used as positive reinforcement for doing other retrieving formats properly. So let's just say I'm working on a casting drill where I'm giving the dog hand signals and she makes great effort. She shows better effort than she has before. When she's done this properly, I'll take out a dummy and do a fun retrieve. So the fun retrieve 
looks like this. I release the dog first. Lexi, Lexi, Lexi. Okay? So the prerequisite for a fun retrieve, the dog's got to be moving. They got to be released. Lexi, Lexi, Lexi. And then I'll throw it. basic retrieving format is a steady retrieve. Now a steady retrieve, the dog has got to wait until they're set. Heel. Sit. So the way they learned this in training is we had a leash on them. If they stayed perfectly steady and didn't move, we'd let them have the retrieve. If they broke or they moved any sort of movement before we released them, we'd give them a sit, correction, and go pick the dummy up. Okay, so if you have a failure, Pick the dummy up. When you throw your steady retrieve, don't look at the dummy. Look at the dog. That way you know exactly what she's doing. If she does make a mistake, you're going to make your correction. By the way, once you begin doing your retrieving, I want you to turn your collar down to probably 30% lower than it was for your obedience. That way, if you do have to use it, you're not going to use it at such a high level that you damage the dog's enthusiasm or drive or momentum. Set. So I'll usually do a few wind-ups like this and right there when I do this I'm usually gonna see wh whether uh, they're gonna break or not and if they do if they do start moving I'll just say sit and nick them. If they stay still I'll throw it and I'm watching the dog. Now one, two, three, four, five, she hasn't moved. One, two, three. Lex if she was to move, I would say sit and nick her, and then I'd go pick the object up. Critical, sit. That if she does have excessive movement or breaks, that you make the sit correction, stabilize your dog, and most importantly, take the retrieve away. The retrieve is what this dog lives for. This is the ultimate positive reinforcement. The only thing better than this is a bird retrieve. This is a, her reward for, for good behavior. Never give the retrieve if the dog does the wrong thing. It's really easy. Sit, Nick, go pick it up. Don't be lazy. <laughs> Do it right, and your dog will always be composed and following your leadership. Obedience to retrieve. Talked about control. Best way to, to instill control is to link a retrieve with obedience. Okay, so we're simply going to do basic obedience procedures followed by a steady retrieve as a reward. I'll show you. I'll work on heel to retrieve, heel. Okay, so I'll walk her at heel. If I need to make a correction, I will. Heel, good, good girl. Once she shows me that she's, gonna do, that she's doing the procedure right, heel. Okay, she just failed, so I made a correction. Good. Good. Heel. Good. Heel. Sit. Now she did it right, so I can throw the fun retrieve. One, two, three. Lexi. Okay, you can cut it there. Sit. Now we'll work on recall to retrieve. It looks like this. Sit. Once the dog achieves the right positioning, I throw the retrieve. Lexi. Sit. You notice I don't throw the dummy until the dogs come all the way to me and stabilize. Lexi. Every time she chews this dummy, I'm giving her a sit neck correction. Now you notice I turned this down, it's only on six, it's pretty light. But if she chews, one of her little idiosyncrasies is she chews at right as she's sitting down, she goes chomp chomp. So I'm going to give her a sit neck right when she does that. 
Now we're going to do something called bird and mouth retrieve. With bird and mouth retrieve, you do a basic steady retrieve. Sit. Two, three, four. Lexi. Heel. And when she delivers, when she comes to a delivery position, sit with the retrieve that you just threw and stabilizes, we throw the next dummy. So let's say she came back with this first one and she was chomping and I made a sit neck correction and then she finally relaxed. That's when I would throw the next one. So I don't throw that next one until I see this stability. Then I take the dummy like this then I'll say, where's your mark? Now what that means, that's a cue, and that's getting the dog to refocus their attention on the dummy that just was thrown. So I say, where's your mark? And then I say, Lexi, Lexi. Now if I said, where's your mark? And she took off, I'd say, no sit, bring her back. And I'd go pick the dummy up and I'd start over. Sit. Now let's talk about the common corrections that we use on a retrieve. Anything that happens that we don't like out there from a basic retrieving mechanics standpoint, the dog goes out for say and runs past the dummy. The dog goes out there and grabs the dummy and begins to run away. The dog goes out there and grabs the dummy and on her way back starts veering off course. Any of those situations, if it happens out there, we've done enough training where a quick heel nick or multiple toots, which means the same thing, followed by neck, should make the correction. So she's out there fiddling around, not doing it right. Nick. She'll pick that dummy up and start coming right back. Anything, once she has the retrieve, anything that happens once she is in the delivery position, that we don't like, chewing, flipping her head around, not sitting, any of those, is sit neck. So guys, you have the tools built into your dog when you take them home. Any problem out there, it's heel nick on a retrieve. Any problem right here is sit nick. Worst case scenario, you give the dog one of those corrections and they drop the dummy. We showed you what to do earlier. You literally pull up on the ear so the dog takes off, let go, and as soon as they start going towards the dummy, back up. Now we're going to do the bird and mouth and we're going to add a little bit more action to it. So I throw one dummy, Lexi, heel. When she comes back, look, I'm going to use my inside turn, heel, or my outside turn, heel, sit. And I'm going to turn her to face wherever I want to throw the next one, heel, sit. Now this is a good place where you might put the little tab lead on, that little short six, eight inch lead. So when, you, when you're moving her and rotating her, you can just use the lead if you want. Sit. Once she gets in position, then you can throw your next dummy in that direction. Where's your mark? Lexi. So now that dog is starting to learn, the quicker she comes back and places herself in the correct position relative to what direction I'm standing, sit. Sit, Nick chewing the dummy, the quicker I'm going to throw the next retrieve in that direction. So now they get positive reinforcement that's directed um, only when they face the direction that we're facing. Lexi. Pretty soon she learns, hey, the quicker I get back in a position, the quicker I have fun focused in that direction that you want me to focus. Once you get to the point where you can do these bird and mouth retrieves like this, Lexi. All right. Heel. Sit. Sit, Nick. Then you can actually do multiple retrieves. When you first begin doing multiple retrieves, obviously you have to get to the point where you can do these bird and mouth retrieves properly. 
you're going to do them in a way that's difficult for the dog to fail. The way you're going to achieve this is you're going to throw one dummy out in the open grass, try to use a white three inch dummy so it's just sticking out there like a beacon. Okay? Throw your second dummy a large angle over 45 degrees away from that one such that they're not in the two marks are not influencing each other. Sit. One. Okay, now watch what I do with the other one. Sit. Mark. Notice I said mark to get it to look up. Lexi. Goes after one. Immediately, I've got my left hand down, heel. Good. And look, what, I'm going to rotate just like I did with bird and mouth. Face the other one. Say sit. Watch what I do. Where's your mark? Really important. Now, I'm not going to send her unless she's looking right at that mark. So if she looks back at me, I won't send her. Watch. I'll distract her. Where's your mark? Where's your mark? Lexi. Now, did you see how she looked back down at that dummy and I didn't send her until she looked at the dummy? That's what you got to do. Sit. Let's just say that she showed me some unusual effort. I would give her a fun retreat. Lexi, Lexi, Lexi. Ho ho! Good girl. Woo! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Heel. Sit. How to properly reinforce a basic retrieve? We talked about using a correction if the dog fails. But let's talk about positive reinforcement. When when do we praise? Well, at a retriever level one standpoint, the dog is still kind of being coerced to give us that perfect retrieve. So we want to get our praise inserted there in the right part and the right portion. So you're going to praise her when she's coming back with the dummy towards you, not when she's picking it up. After she's picked it up, after the dog is coming towards you, which is what we want them to do, obviously, we're going to, we're going to praise them. When they get about 10 feet away from us, then we're going to stop praising and just repeat the heel command. Because if we keep praising, a lot of times the dog will get so excited they won't want to deliver it right. So watch, I'm going to just have you focus on the dog on this and listen to when I praise. Okay? I send the dog, Lexi. I give her a quick reminder. Heel. Now she's coming back. Good. Good. And then stop about right there. Heel. Sit. Sit next. If you don't like the way she's holding the dummy, you can bop it out and give her an ear pinch. Sit. Good. Right, sit. Pedestal training. She's had a, a small amount of this, but you're going to continue this at home, and the trainer here between now and then is going to work a little bit more on this. Uh, with the pedestal, we ask the dog to go up. We use the word up. The dog jumps up onto the pedestal, and we give them a retreat when they're up there. So we do a steady retreat. Lexi, you can you can make it any sort of pedestal you want. Um, I suggest going one foot or more over the ground. It makes it um, a little bit sit more like a real duck blind where they actually have to hop up onto something. Up, sit. In the beginning, the easiest way is just to take the dog by the collar or a tab lead and just help them up. Sit. Once they're up there, throw, retrieve, and I'm telling you, because of the training they've had, Lexi, you're going to have trouble getting them off of it <laughs> because they enjoy the retrieving so much. Sit. Up. Sit. Now, the Morks. Sit, Nick. I'm going to turn my collar up just a little bit. The Morks experience dog gets at jumping up at this, the further away you can get before you center up there. Okay, I'll show you progression right now. Lexi. I'm getting a little further back each time. 
if you practice this, slowly you'll be able to back up to the point where you're as far away as you want. You can go 50, 60 yards away from it if you really want. It just takes your time. Take your time, move back in slow increments. Now we're dog hide. So getting a dog into some sort of enclosure, we're going to use the word kennel. She gets into the enclosure. Now, the rules are she's not supposed to put her feet on the outside. So if you have one of these, what I actually suggest you do is put a two by four about right here. Okay, that, that's gonna make it a little bit more apparent to your dog that they've put their feet over that threshold. If they get their feet out, we literally are just gonna act like we're gonna step on them, just roll a light pressure and they'll pull their feet back in. Sit. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Quack, 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 quack. Next. Obviously, if I didn't quite trust her, I would be ready to give a sit nick if she moved when I was distracting her. Kennel. One, two, three. Lexi. With regards to when to do the pedestal and the um, the dog hide, I would. These would be the icing on the cake. These would be after your obedience, after your drills. These would be these would be the the hunting simulation scenarios. And so these would be like uh, a ten percent type of a thing. You want to keep these really fun. This is where you simulate a hunt. So when you're doing these, you know, don't do a bunch of arduous drills. Put them up there and give them some marks. Channel. You can also use uh, the, the dead fowl retriever dummies, which simulate birds in this scenario. Um, again, when you're doing the pedestal and the dog hide, it's a, it's a hunting simulation thing. Make it fun. Try to, sometimes you feel like you need to be an octopus to do this right. Um, have your reinforcement ready to go. Okay, so it might take you a little while to coordinate it, or you can have literally hand the transmitter to somebody else and instruct them if the dog get, starts to get out of the, the uh, dog hide early or off the pedestal to give them a, a sit. Main thing is get the timing right. She forgot that one. Now she's got a hunt. Oh, there it is. What a dog. You know what I do when my dog is out there hunting in the area? You get a level one dog that's out there hunting in the general area? I'll tell you what I do. Nothing. Don't be a micromanager. If that dog is in the general area, a mark is supposed to be hunted if the dog doesn't find it right away. The more you jump in there and try to handle them, especially considering a level one dog doesn't handle yet, and you shouldn't handle, the more micromanagement they get, um, the less confidence they're gonna have to stay out there and hunt, which is what you want a retriever to do. Go straight out to the area and hunt until they find it. Two, hop, hop, three, four, hop. Hey, one, two, three. Woo! Oh, what is this? Hey, hey, one, two. <laughs> Lexi. 
Lexi. Good girl, Lexi. Up here. Come on. Atta girl. Sit. Okay, you don't want to do this drill until you feel really comfortable running the dog on all the basics that you've seen so far. Um, once you feel confident your dog will stay steady and give you a nice delivery, you can start um, working on marking with the gun barrel. Here we have a wooden gun. Um, you, can use a, you can use a fence post, a stake, anything that you can point out there. It doesn't really matter. You know, Ideally, it's a, it's a stick-like object that's about the same length as a gun. The idea is that you're going to move this barrel back and forth, and you're going to throw the, the dummy Lexi, where the gun is pointed. Now, at this point, she hasn't had much experience with this field, so she doesn't make the association. Sit. But very quickly, after doing this enough times, Lexi, she'll start to, to recognize wherever this gun points, that dummy's going to appear. Sit. So you notice, I'll literally hold the, the gun up with my left hand, and my right hand, I've got the object. And it really doesn't matter which hand does what, but one point is, the point is one hand is holding the, the gun in position, the other's got the, the uh, dummy uh, laid across your back, so when you get the gun pointed where you want, you can literally throw the object right over. Lexi. And if you're having trouble coordinating all this, you can have a helper behind you that will throw the object over the barrel. Sit. So usually I'll start with the barrel straight out, move it, then throw. Lexi. So I'll start it in front, move to the right throw, then I'll do it the opposite way. I'll do one to the left now. Sit. Sit. Uh-oh, she broke. Sit, sit. And I was too late. I made the correction with the collar. No. Sit, Nick. Sit. Now, had I, had I stopped her quick enough, I would have walked out and taken it away. Now that I saw that she broke, I'm going to get myself really ready to make that correction, so watch what I do. Literally have the transmitter on this so I can pick if I need. Sit. There it is. Did you see that? Caught her. It said sit, nicked her. Now I'm going to go pick this object up. All right, now observe the response. And do the same thing. Let's see if she'll fall for it. One, two, three. Brrr. Lexi. And that's how proper a proper correction sequence works. And look, sit. now the dog did it right, and she got what she wanted, didn't she? She got a retrieve when she did it right. She didn't get the retrieve when she did it wrong. Sit. The basics of performing water retrieves. Uh, the, the, the basic mechanics are, are all going to be identical to doing a land retrieve. However, um, the dog has to carry the dummy out of the water without shaking, deliver it without shaking. Once we take the dummy, the dog can shake. So the way this has been trained, we started with a check cord. When the dog would come out of the dummy water with the dummy, we'd give him a, a heel with a jerk on the chain. The dog learned that they couldn't stop at the edge and drop the dummy. Once we force fetch the dog, we taught the dog if they drop it early, they're gonna get a force fetch correction. Um, and now it's to the point where if the dog begins to shake prematurely, all we have to do is give a heel nick with the collar. So as the dog is coming out of the water, just watch them if they begin shaking prematurely, it's a heel nick. That'll stop the shaking process. If they start shaking when they've already made it all the way to this delivery position, it would be a sit nick. So if it happens out there, it's heel nick. If it happens here, it's sit nick. One, two, three, four, five. Lexi. The 
best way to reinforce a good delivery in the water is the same as it is on land. Do a bird and mouth mark because that second mark is thrown um, in direct correspondence with a stable delivery of the first mark. I'm going to give her a little reminder as she's coming out of the shoreline. Nick, sit. Good. She hadn't made it all the way around to the delivery position, so that was a heel nick. Had she made it all the way around and was facing this way, it would have been a sit nick. Now I throw the bird and mouth mark to reinforce the delivery. Sit, Lexi. Now, if you're seeing shaking every time, premature shaking, then you're probably gonna have to dial your collar up a little. You shouldn't see this. Um, you shouldn't see this every time. The dog should stop doing it fairly quickly. Um, and then eventually shouldn't do it at all. So you, you're probably gonna have to titrate, increase that pressure. Here's a perfect one. I'll do a bird and mouth. I'll do a short one here so we can move on to the next subject. Lexi. Sit. At this level of training, we do not want to challenge the dog to cheat the shoreline. So we're going to throw the dummies square with the shoreline. So it'd be, the direction of the throw would be 90 degrees to the shoreline. If we start doing angles, the dog is not educated enough and has not been de-cheated. So what's going to happen is the dog, instead of coming straight back to us, will start to go to the shoreline early. And the, the, the more they learn to do that, the more they're going to do that. And then when later on, if you decide to bring the dog to a higher level of training, it'll be difficult to facilitate breaking those bad habits. So for right now, do your practice square with the shorelines and you won't have the dog cheat. In other words, you're going to be presenting her with a scenario where the quickest direction, the quickest uh, uh, way back to the shoreline is a straight line to you. Square with the shoreline. Look like this. Sit. Easiest way to get to that dummy is to go straight. Lexi. And let me tell you something, I've been training dogs for 20 years. That entry right there, it never gets old. Right, great effort. So what better way to give her positive than a fun retreat? Lexi, hey, 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 Lexi. <laughs> there she's on. For a minute there, I didn't think she was going to see it. I threw it a different way than she was expecting. Heel. Sit. All right, because we are unable to get to the upland field right now, I'm just going to take a moment to talk about your... Um, your uh, uh, commands and, and uh, reinforcements in the upland field. You have all your basics with your yard obedience with your most of your maneuvers. The real only additional command is your change direction signal. Change direction is two toots on the whistle or you can actually say her name, Lexi, to get her to change direction. Okay, so if she is out quartering and you want her to change direction, you're going to Give two toots or say her name. If she doesn't immediately change directions, you'll, like any other obedience command and correction, you'll repeat the, the whistle command or the verbal command fo directly followed with pressure. So it'd be, if the dog didn't turn, Nick. The dog will turn. And uh, usually to help them uh, recognize and continue to uh, quarter properly. If they're off to the left, when I give the two toot, I'll, I'll walk to the right slightly just to help communicate with them. Um, and then vice versa. If the dog's off to the right and I give them two toots, I'll probably kind of move my hand out and move a little bit over to the right. And um, that should keep that dog in the quartering pattern rather than coming back to me.
I forgot to w talk about your remote sit in the upland field. And I'm sure you remember this from your other dog, but when your dog is out quartering, if they begin getting too far away or tracking a bird and, le and getting out of gun range, you blow a single whistle. If the dog doesn't sit immediately, sit Nick. And then simply catch up to the dog. When you're ready to release her and continue your hunt, say hunt him up again and your dog will take off. Anytime that you get your dog out of a crate, a vehicle, or simply change environments, always try to practice going through the big three obedience commands, making the proper reinforcements as you go from one to the next, getting a success on each one before you go to the next, until you get the dog complying on all of your three big three. And the big three again are sit, stay, walking at heel, and recall. Okay, so for instance, when you go to the upland field, make the dog stay in the crate, release her, tell her to sit immediately. If she doesn't sit, give her a correction. Walk around her a few times. If she moves, sit Nick. Once she stabilizes and you can move anywhere and she's sitting, then start walking her at heel. Now she's gonna be excited. You'll probably make a few heel corrections, do a few outside turns, a few inside turns. Once you get her healing properly, then tell her to sit, walk away, do a few recalls. Once the dog will, will do the recalls properly, you're finished with your big three, then you can, you can go on hunting. What this does is it recalibrates your dog, gets your dog in the, the right um, mental state. In other words, it gets her understanding that this is gonna be teamwork and she must follow your leadership before you ever release her. So every time you do this, the dog is learning that in order to go hunting and enjoy the hunting field, they have to perform the commands for you and link all of that obedience with the fun of being able to go hunting.